Next up in our series of reviewing sales pages by really big players in the world of online business and especially motivation, I think would be another common theme. We're going to be looking at the sales page for Gabrielle Bernstein's program, the Miracle Membership. So let's review her voice, the techniques that she uses on that page, some very unique elements to her and her type of brand we're gonna get into. I've only skimmed the page, don't worry, it's mostly gonna be a first impression, but it's gonna be super, super interesting in particular this week, so be sure to stay tuned, let's go. Welcome or welcome back to Emma Gibbons Content and Coffee. On this YouTube channel, we talk about all things copywriting, content marketing, and entrepreneurship. So if that sounds good to you, please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell down below. You can also listen to the podcast version when we screen share like we're going to today. You're not gonna see that on the podcast or hear that on the podcast, but most Monday mornings, you'll have a fresh episode for you to check out over on the podcast as well. So that'll be linked in the YouTube description. Welcome to my computer. So we are looking at the Miracle Membership sales page. And you can see, of course, right before the scroll, the entire page is filled with a video. So there's a sales video front and center when you approach the Miracle Membership. And this could be a great thing because there is a stat out there that there's an 80% increase in conversions when you put a sales video on a sales page. Um, Oftentimes you would put it at the top like this, and it's usually quite a short video. In my experience, those are also the ones that do the best as we explored in a recent YouTube video with Tony Robbins uh, membership. His sales page had a very long sales video and we dissected why the length of it and some of the pieces of it didn't really belong there and actually grow detrimental because they're only paying half attention at that point and already scrolling. So this one's a lot better in terms of length, but it also depends on how she uses the video because you can still accidentally kind of bore people. So they end up scrolling. Maybe you can excite people. So they end up scrolling, uh, scrolling too, but let's just keep an eye on that when we listen. And the other thing I can already tell is going to be a really important piece to keep an eye on, uh, because it's a membership for a personal brand, Gabby Bernstein, the positioning of her in the membership. How important is what you get out of the membership and how important is getting her in the membership? This is a big question. I noticed with Tony Robbins membership, if you haven't watched the video, it'll be linked in the description that Tony was there. He does pop in and he is a benefit access to him on a somewhat regular basis is a, a benefit, but they really sell important features with benefits beyond Tony. Um, I was actually quite surprised and pleased with the way that he inserted himself into the membership, the way he talked about it as well. His sales video was actually fantastic, but it was way too long. <laughs> but the beginning of it, in a lot of ways, was fantastic. So I would love to see, in Gabby Bernstein's case, who also is a personal brand and has kind of a guru status, um, how she has approached it. So let's get started. So right off the bat, she's doing something I wouldn't normally recommend doing. Um, she says, sometimes I laugh and think that I started the Miracle Membership just so I could have spiritual friends or more spiritual friends. But that's a lot of I. Sometimes I laugh. I wanted more spiritual friends. She can do this because of it being a personal brand. People already wanting her, basically, or wanting to be her. And a membership like this that's all about access to a person is usually going to be targeting people at level five and the five levels of customer awareness. So if you're not familiar with that concept, those five levels, we'll link the uh, video in the description box too here. And essentially you have to use techniques that match each level. So if you meet someone when they're at a level two, you want to be using level two sales copy techniques to make a sale or at least move them up towards level three. And the higher up they get, the warmer and easier of a sell it is. So this kind of membership ordinarily would be speaking to level fives. Level fives are generally people who have been a customer before. So they may have attended one of Gabby's events or bought a book, at the very least bought a book. And they probably are on her email list, you know, following her on her social media. They're very exposed to her. They're very familiar with her. They've already paid money and they're very easy to sell, generally speaking. So I'm hoping that she's marketing this to them. And if that's the case, then speaking about herself, because they know her and they feel comfortable with her, 
already kind of sold in some ways, at least on her value, they won't mind as much her using that I language. But ordinarily, you want to start any sort of sales page, sales video, sales Instagram posts with you language. So maybe you would say something about you wanting more spiritual friends versus I wanted more spiritual friends. So I created this, or at the very least, I created this for you. So we could all have more spiritual friends. Usually that's the best practice is to speak to the customer and put the customer's desires first. Even more important, the lower down you are on those levels, level one, level two, but you, I still would approach it that way as a level five. It's only going to help with conversion. It's only going to help. So it's a choice, but I would still have at least started the video like that. First one or two sentences, I would have still started it with you language and then maybe shifted a little bit more into Gabby's persona. Follow my guidance. Let me show you the way. That's all I wanted. There was so much information out there with different teachers and different practices, but it was, and it was sometimes hard to find and sometimes hard to nail down. So she is still telling all of this from I and her experience, but she's kind of going into desires and pain points. She said what she wanted first, which is not usually the order that we would put that in. Usually we'd go with the pain points or the dissatisfactions first. So, you know, it was hard to find the resources, hard to commit to. Also the construction of that, I would paint more of a picture, you know, I would I don't know, let's say attend a retreat and be psyched and then come back and find myself longing to be back on retreat every morning because it was so hard to bring into my everyday life, something like that. It's a little bit more descriptive. For her, she's basically just saying it was hard, which is how people speak, but you can get a better result out of your audience if you can bring in the senses or tell a bit more of a story. So that's one thing. And then also I would say those pieces first, then move into... And what I really wanted was, we want to have pain points first, desire second, generally speaking. I really wanted a home base. I also longed for community. I just wanted friends. I just wanted spiritual friends. That was it. We've had kind of a slideshow just now of Gabby speaking at events. So definitely boosting that persona she has as a bit of a guru. Um, people are paying to listen to her. They're buying her books. Um, it's just reinforcing that image that she has. And also, in <laughs> I bet you consciously what they're thinking of is reinforcing what she just said about community. But as someone who's not already like a super fan of Gabby Bernstein, for me, it makes me think of, oh, this is like a Gabby Bernstein thing. <laughs> it doesn't make me think like, oh, this is a community thing. Community for me is usually represented more by a circle versus like someone standing on a stage. Um, but I would think someone who is already really comfortable with her and a big fan of hers will see it as a representation of community as she desired. Okay, she says, the promise of the miracle membership is that you will manifest a life beyond your wildest dreams. So big promise, and we want big, bold claims. It is a bit abstract. Um, I would follow this up and I haven't listened to the next piece yet, but I would follow this up with examples if possible. Um, and maybe even lean into some social proof. So you could use someone's story, someone's testimonial, or you could just list out some options. Like, um, maybe someone has always wanted to write down their story, um, to pass on to their grandkids. And in the end, they actually managed to write a full memoir and have the confidence to submit it for publication. It was just picked up and, you know, something beyond your wildest dreams is kind of the point I'm trying to illustrate. Like maybe they had one idea and then it was even brought further. Um, so I think a few examples like that would bring what's a pretty abstract promise into something more concrete. And everybody can kind of either find themselves in the specific examples or because you're listing examples, it's much easier for them to think of one as well. Just like when you're in the classroom um, and your teacher gives you an example and then it's much easier to generate your own because you know kind of the structure that you're working with. Interesting. Okay, so she's going into some of the features now. You may hear dogs barking in the background. I'm sorry. Features including a newsletter, basically. <laughs> Every Sunday you get um, an email from her, which includes you know, links to meditations, that sort of thing. Um, she's just shared that you get access to an amazing Facebook group. There's never been a place with more love on the internet. It is absolutely gorgeous. And that's where you will feel the support and the love of all of the... It looks like from those kind of clips of the Facebook group that she may get on calls, like live coaching with people. 
no actual information there, just these kind of video clips, and that is the way it looks like. So that piece would be certainly appealing to the level fives. But overall, my first thought is it's a newsletter and a Facebook group, which usually are free, <laughs> or they're usually like add-ons to a more core um, set of features or a core curriculum for a course or something. So like Tony Robbins, if you go back to that video, he had a Facebook group and I made a comment there that's kind of not even a selling point in, anymore. Um, there's just so many and a lot of people are actually kind of tired of Facebook, but it wasn't the focus because it was just kind of like an added benefit if you enjoy Facebook. But there was a lot more core, there were core materials. You had a library of materials and actual like scheduled coaching times and all that kind of stuff. So a newsletter and a Facebook group, I'm finding, I don't understand exactly. <laughs> um, unless it's like a pretty inexpensive membership. Um, I'm a little confused about the offer. You'll also get access to hundreds of hours of content meditations, workshops from years past. Okay. She says access to content, hundreds of hours of content, meditations and workshops from years past. That's something more. That's something more, especially if they're not, I would imagine they're not publicly available. So for a two minute and 54 second video, I've spent a long time talking about it because <laughs> honestly, I'm, I'm not very impressed. Um, like the video production, sure, but the script itself, I'm very confused by. The next best thing to having Gabby as your personal coach. So this makes sense <laughs> um, in terms of a promise that is going to be very appealing to a level five uh, potential customer here. Totally what they want is access to Gabby. The next best thing though tells me that Gabby is not going to be their personal coach, of course. But it also makes me wonder, are they going to have access to speak to her at some point, like kind of hot seat coaching? Or is it because she's posting in the Facebook group, talking at you? Like, I don't know what that means, but I think the promise is very desirable. And in fact, I might put that at the top of the page above the video um, because I just think that's such an important promise. All right, so they have a call to action button right here. In theory, the idea is that the video has already sold some people because they're such um, hot leads, basically. They're such ready to go level fives. Hopefully they maybe read an email that was selling it to them as well. So by having uh, a top of the page, basically call to action button like this, you can get someone once they've decided and they don't even need to read the rest of it, which you never know, maybe would put second thoughts in their head. So they can click on this, let's see what happens. Yeah, it boots them down to the investment. So are you ready to live a life beyond your wildest dreams? So this is better <laughs> in terms of like a, a first piece of text or an early piece of text, just like this one up here, they use you language. So your personal coach, are you ready to live a life beyond your wildest dreams? And questions are a great way to grab attention as well. So this is great for headlines and other kind of first sentences like this. That's great. We go straight into the I language again, though, <laughs> as a story. Maybe it makes sense here because at least then you've led with you language and she is kind of a guru. Well, she is a guru personality. So we could transition into I language here. You know, she goes straight into the community of like-minded people to meditate and share life changing practices that is directly relevant to the Miracle membership. So even though she's talking about I, my audience, I felt, etc., it does directly tie into, well, that's why I created the Miracle membership. But again, I, I would say for you, she does say, I want you to have a spiritual home base where you can receive clear guidance, inspiration, hope, and connection. We have another call to action button the minute they're ready. This is a good example of call to action language. We want it to basically say something like, yes, I want, or yes, I'm ready. Those are two of the best kind of intros. You want them to say yes, because any yes that they say, even they're not going to say it out loud like I did, but they're nodding internally and saying yes internally. And that's a silent close. And the more of those you get, the more agreements that you have with someone on a sales page, the more likely you're going to say yes and agree to actually invest in something. So this is a really well-structured um, piece of text. I would say the only thing is um, I might switch this up a couple times on the page instead of always, yes, I'm ready to join Miracle Membership. It could be, yes, I'm ready and whatever your kind of core statements are to live a life beyond my wildest dreams. I don't know. I think that abstract language might, maybe it does appeal to her audience. It doesn't mean anything to me. 
So maybe they have tested it or maybe they've done a little bit of work and have realized that this kind of spiritual, highly abstract language does resonate with their people. So maybe you could say, yes, I'm ready to manifest a life beyond my wildest dreams and it not be too abstract for them. Oh, good. So they've gone straight into a testimonial. I skimmed my eyes down and saw a name. Oh, it's a testimonial. So I would have put um, quotation marks here just so that you know, from the moment you have a quotation here around the word the or you know, on the left side of the word the, you automatically psychologically prepare someone for what they're going to read. Um, but I think putting a testimonial is a really good idea because it is making the point that they want, but from a theoretically more credible source, because it's not Gabby who's going to make the sale directly and make the money. It's a third party who we think is more objective or we're more likely to believe essentially. Um, she does also attest to it being worth the price and being of high value. It, it, I mean, this might be a good example of kind of that client language leading to thinking that some more abstract spiritual language works. Love and light, that doesn't really mean anything concrete. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just, it's not a very concrete concept. My favorite spiritual leader, very guru relationship who feels more like a friend, which is nice. It makes it feel like, well, this will be approachable. She'll be approachable. I'll be close to Gabby, which of course is because she's, people want to be close to her. She's a guru figure. So this is a really great selected testimonial. And I think putting it high up in the page, unusual in many ways, um, is a great idea because in other ways, it's not very traditional. There's really no pain points hit at, at all on this page. It's all heavy on desire which is uh, another choice. I usually use at least reflecting the dissatisfaction someone is feeling because obviously something feels like it's missing. So even if it's just missing a community, I would, I would paint a little bit more of a picture for someone of how it's feeling to miss that community because they already feel that way. But by painting the picture, it shows, oh, they understand me. And they psychologically prepare the reader to then move into the next phase of and something else is different. A community like this does exist. You build their belief and then you switch into desire by really describing the community. So I still would have had some of that reflection going on here, uh, but it's a very desire oriented page. So then we get into here's how you'll be supported. All the benefits, it goes back to I language. You'll get me as your personal coach. Again, I'm still, it makes it sound very personal because I mean, up here it's what is it? The next best thing to having Gabby as a personal coach. So what do you mean by personal coach. It's a good promise, but I'm suspicious of you know, what level of personal that is. This sounds great. And this is also a tangible feature, which is nice. Um, I would probably, maybe not here because it's kind of like a listicle almost in a way, but somewhere on the page, if you're going to promise meditations, why does someone want the meditations? Does it help their nervous system calm down at the end of the day? So they get better sleep. So their hormones are better regulated. Like, you know, the kind of five whys. Why does that matter? Why does that matter? Well, then why does that matter? And you really get into, like, okay, I get it. I get how this connects to my life. Here, maybe it's not the end of the world. It's more of a list kind of orientation. And I, honestly, by this point, I've kind of like, I've just embraced, I think, <laughs> that this is not a typical sales page. Maybe because it's not a typical audience. I don't know. I don't know the back end. I don't know how the stats are going. Um, for this program, for this membership for Gabby, if it's doing well and it's getting the signups they want, some of that will be because her people might be just so warmed up because of great marketing, because of great delivery, all of that. And it's also possible that it might be doing okay and it could do better if they did use a few more of the more traditional copywriting techniques. But at this point, I'm just letting you know, this is not a very typical structure. <laughs> Like the listicle is not going to happen. It's not typical on the sales page. Um, the weekly coaching emails with the meditation affirmation, a lesson and a worksheet. Okay. Again, why does that matter? How does that uh, change the course of your week? For example, um, at least with this, the hundreds of hours of content inside your portal, portal, it helps you manifest abundance, reduce anxiety, improve your relationships and more. That's somewhat more concrete uh, as a so that. Like, why does that matter? Why does the content matter? Well, so that you manifest abundance, reduce anxiety, etc. Then it goes in, even deeper, I guess, into these three points. So the things that are included, the quarterly 21 day challenges, 
So here it does go a little bit into what I was saying up here around like, what are the, the benefits? Why does meditation actually matter? I think um, an unshakable sense of inner peace. Okay. That's what do people desire? Again, they're, they're very spiritual promises, um, which I mean, it's a spiritual product. These aren't my favorite, but I, I'm trying to stay detached enough to realize like they're not my favorite because I'm not her ideal client. Um, I do like this. Feel free, safe and peaceful in your body. For some people, that might not be very concrete. For me, I, I love that sentence. That would be really meaningful for me. But I would say overall, becoming a magnet for your desires is, is quite a vague promise. They have some benefits here to transform your relationships, release fear, attract abundance. No specific examples of what that looks like, um, but it is trying to give some benefits. All access pass. This is one that's definitely missing the benefits. Why does the all access pass matter? Why does it even matter that it's like Netflix? I would lean into, you know, when you're going through a rough time, you can find exactly the talk that will speak to your situation to help you through it, to, you know, help you speak straight on to your partner instead of backing down when um, something really matters to you. Or I don't know, give some specific examples somewhere on this page. Gosh. All right, so we have another call to action, and then we have some testimonials, which is great. I think testimonials are incredibly important for something like a spiritual offer. This is just reiterating, again, what you get. It's so strange to me, because there was the listicle that had kind of the three, I guess, top things that you get. Then there's a little deeper dive into what's included, and then this is the same thing. It's, again, what's included. Um very weird to me. There's a lot that's strange about this page. As a copywriter looking at it, the structure is very weird. Yes, I'm ready to join the Miracle Membership. Another uh, call to action. A message from Gabby, basically. I'm here to support you wherever you are now. More testimonials. Then we get to the investment section. Become a Miracle Member. Choose a subscription option that's best for you. That's great. Um, you can also use a more specific word, like that's more affordable for you. Um, best fits your life. You have options there. So then we have uh, payment plans so over six months or over one year. But when I was first looking at it, I was thinking like it was 114 per month. These are the memberships. So you get a six month membership. This may just be me. I'd love to hear in the comments if you interpreted it that way. But when they said click or choose a subscription option that works best for you, I was thinking these were like payment plan options. Um, so I was kind of confused and thrown by that. Um, but also this makes the price look a little bit more reasonable to me for what you get. Um, cause if it was this much per month or for uh, per month over six months, I, I could not wrap my head around that. So basically the only new content that she or her team creates is a newsletter. And it looks like maybe she um, posts into the Facebook group and I guess they need to create or she'll lead one of the 21 day challenges. So it looks like it's the same every year and these are pre-existing challenges so she's not necessarily reinventing the wheel with these but she she needs to be i guess on facebook probably is how she would deliver it um each day for 21 days but there's not actually a lot which is a benefit of memberships right is it's recurring revenue if you can get a huge number of people in them it can be significant revenue but it's uh overall fairly easy to maintain you have a guarantee here, which is great. Um, information about the cancellation policy, I think is super important. It can help people feel more relaxed. There's a safety net there. You have, looks like seven days to receive a full refund. So you can play around with it a little bit and people are more likely to take the plunge and say yes, because they have that buffer. They can experience it. And if it's not right for them, they can actually get a refund. But a lot of people don't end up asking for refunds. Um, so usually you're pretty safe to offer a short-term refund period like this. And I think it's more honest. So I'm glad that they offer that. After all of that on this page, the fact that someone might have that is an FAQ. Like, I mean, like the person, the reader who's still not clear on it. Um, it's just reiterating in a very condensed version. So basically meditations, audio lessons, worksheets, positive affirmations, and yeah, community of life-minded miracle members. How to figure out if it's for you, structure and guidance to stay on the wagon of your spiritual path. I think they should have used messaging in the actual page content. It this this page is not structured for the customer um, because it's it's not. It seems almost like her team or her are expecting people to be sold by the time they get on the page, and for them the page is like 
okay, click, because they're already ready. They're not, it almost seems like they're not expecting people to read the page. Um, I'm so confused by this whole thing. It's a, it's a strange, it's a strange page. How much of my time will it require? Okay, that's a pretty common FAQ. What if I can't finish all the content each week? Another common FAQ. Yeah, so if it's if you're new to spiritual practice, you're yes, because it gives you flexible structure, support, and inspiration as you begin your journey. I think this is a good question to speak to. I don't know that it only belongs in the FAQs. I would probably have spoken to it earlier on the page. And if you've been on it for years, it's also for you. The answer is yes, because it helps you stay committed. Um, and when you get off track, because life can get busy, you can, I guess, center yourself again. But again, like these are the story that I want a sales page to tell because I want it to be about me, the customer. It's not just me. All, all customers want that. We want to see ourselves reflected and understood, be convinced that something different uh, or from our current dissatisfied state is possible. Your desired state, paint a picture of the desired state, make it irresistible, and then sell features plus benefits because really you're selling based on the benefits so that they can say yes and they are okay with the investment or maybe even think like, well, this is incredible value. It's a no brainer investment. This page is missing structure in a lot of ways. It's missing structure. Um, it's highly focused on desires and abstract concepts. I like the testimonials. Um, I think the idea of the sales video was great, um, but the sales video itself, I don't feel was executed well. That is my overall kind of summary of this page. Yeah, I'm not super impressed. Um, we've seen some better pages for sure. Um, I would certainly say the Tony Robbins page that we've reviewed on this channel was better. Even, and I, Marie Forleo, I reviewed her Time Genius page and it was, it was okay. Like I had, um, I had opinions on it. I think it was actually, no, I think it was an overall good page, but there were pieces of it that I were more like techniques that I didn't prefer. And I spoke to that and explained what I might've done instead, but also explained what she was doing when it was working. I don't feel that much worked on this page <laughs> with Gabby Bernstein's uh, miracle membership. So I'll leave it there and uh, yeah, we'll head back to our normal filming room. So what did you think of the sales page for Gabrielle Bernstein's miracle membership? I would love to hear in the comments below. What techniques did you like? Did anything feel off for you? That is definitely not the direction that you would go. How do you feel about the product overall after hearing it described on that sales page? I have never come across it before, although I'm familiar with Gabrielle Bernstein. So my first impression of the membership is from the sales page, as is very often intended. And I would love to know if you had that same experience, what you thought of it. What do you think of the Miracle membership? If you liked today's episode, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video about copywriting, content marketing, or entrepreneurship. I am so grateful you spent time with me today. Thank you so, so much. And YouTube will suggest some new videos for you to check out right now, or you can make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye.